welcome i am now covering glomerulonephritis the pathology of glomeruli are the microscopic structures but they do a big function 1.2 liters of uh, blood flows through them 1728 liters per day the glomerular filtrate 180 liters per day much of it is reabsorbed leaving about 1 to 2 liters of urine per day and because of its filtration capacity it traps large proteins particularly antigens antibodies immune complexes toxins so glomerular injury is common also due to drugs whenever there is antigen antibody complexes deposited there it activates complement system and it causes the damage inflammation cytokines now clinically to understand the two major types of glomerular damage the minor damage to the porocytes only without inflammation leads to only pure albuminuria selective proteinuria nephrotic syndrome and major filter damage leads to inflammation there is leakage of whole blood hematuria but there is oliguria because inflammation compresses the capillaries the blood flow will be decreased nephrotic syndrome nephritic syndrome now the systemic effects of kidney i'm just summarizing here you need to read more the physiology there are many more effects some common ones i have mentioned now glomerular disorders are classified according to the etiology primary damage to the glomerulus or secondary damage in other diseases immunological commonest cause that is anti gbm antibodies are non glomerular antigens sitting on the glomerulus then forming complexes or antigen antibody complexes are already formed in the blood glomerular injury happens secondarily because of just entrapment of the immune complexes in the in the glomerulus morphologically diffuse focal global segmental i'll describe more later but most important is clinical the clinical features of glomerular disease are classified into two major nephritic syndrome nephrotic syndrome and others such as acute renal failure just hematuria and chronic renal failure pathologically it can be minimal change glomerular nephritis proliferative glomerular nephritis membranous membrane proliferative or crescentic or focal segmental glomerulosclerosis and i'm just showing one sample picture of a gross specimen of a kidney in a acute glomerular nephritis just inflammation that's all now we will cover more detail nephritic and nephrotic focal means involvement of some glomerulus not others focal diffuse means all the glomeruli are affected now global means one whole glomerulus and segmental means a portion or one of the capillary tuft so when we say focal segmental glomerulosclerosis means only few glomeruli getting affected by only partial segments focal segment okay just for understanding not very important now the pathogenesis the commonest cause of glomerular disease is immune the immune complexes antigens antibodies are activated complements get deposited in the filtration membrane that's the endothelium basement membrane and the blue colored the food processes are the porocyte immune complexes with the minimal damage they sit under the porocytes sub epithelial are within the basement membrane or large deposits throughout and they cause the major damages by activation of inflammation circulating immune complex diseases example sle infections antibody against the antigens example in situ which is the most common one we will discuss now post streptococcal anti gm antibody disease is autoimmune crescentic i'm just showing deposition can be either linear or lumps so when it is linear it is usually in situ formation of antigen antibody complexes or antibodies against the whole basement membrane that is linear positivity in the immunofluorescence when it is granular lumpy which is the more common the depositions will be irregular so it helps in classifying the glomerulonephritis now i'm going through first the important ones nephrotic syndrome which is non inflammatory 
massive albuminuria, hypoalbuminemia, and hyperlipidemia. And three diseases we will discuss under this, minimal change disease, focal segmental, and membranous. Then there are many other causes of nephrotic syndrome. Probably you need to remember is diabetes, which we have covered separately, the microalbuminuria of diabetes. Remember this picture, young child with edema around the face and normal or increased urine with significant albuminuria, more protein loss. And the edema is due to hypoproteinemia in the blood. So now the first common one, minimal change glomerulonephritis. So this is the classic case, the commonest in children. It's also known as NIL disease or lipoid nephrosis. 80% cases of nephrotic syndrome in children are this minimal change disease. Etiology unknown idiopathic, but there is destruction of podocytes. Only seen under electron microscopy. So by normal microscopy, routine microscopy, there is no change. It looks like normal glomerulus, okay? Just a normal glomerulus when we see patent capillaries. When you see patent capillaries, that means it is normal. So in the laboratory, albuminuria, lipiduria, so clinically it is nephrotic syndrome, usually following a recent upper respiratory tract infection in about 30% children. Spontaneous remission in majority, it recovers, but some may progress to chronic renal failure or focal segmental glomerulosclerosis, so further damage. Now this is the normal electron microscopy of the basement membrane, okay, these are the podocytes, that is the endothelial layer. Now, in a case of minimal change disease, the same basement membrane, that's the endothelium below and the outer portion which should have been like this is all damaged. So, there are no food processes properly. Okay, so the loss of food processes, normally regular food processes and minimal change disease, loss of food process. Remember, food processes with a nephrin molecule are the ones which stop the smallest proteins, albumin. Now, next one, focal segmental glomerulosclerosis, FSGS. About 20 to 30 percent nephrotic syndrome in adults. It can also occur in children, but rare. Primary diseases where just a nephrotic syndrome without known etiology are secondary in HIV, Hodgkin's, or IgA nephropathy rarely. Morphologically, segmental collapse and sclerosis with IgM deposit and the porosote damage like minimal change disease. But unlike minimal change, here the glomerulus does not appear normal. There is segmental, focal, only few glomeruli, segments of the glomeruli become sclerotic means there is deposition of the fibrin and there is no blood flowing in that area. Clinically, it presents as nephrotic syndrome, usually following an upper respiratory tract infection associated with Hodgkin's lymphoma, drugs, HIV, prognosis, spontaneous resolution in 30%, but majority will end up in chronic renal failure. When there is a severe global sclerosis, mean the sclerosis becomes extensive, most of the glomeruli involved, then it is known as collapsing glomerulopathy seen in HIV and drug induced. So focal segmental involvement, nephrotic syndrome. Now, membranous glomerulonephritis is the common, membranous glomerulonephritis is more common in adults, nephrotic syndrome. Primary type is autoantibody to podocyte antigen, but secondary types are seen in more common all autoimmune disorders, hepatitis B virus, infections, SLE, malignancy, gold, that is heavy metal poisoning, drugs, particularly anti-inflammatory pathogenesis is development of autoantibody against podocyte antigen, activating directly complement without inflammation, a peculiar situation in this. So only proteinuria, no inflammation, but the deposition of antibody is so strong that the whole glomerular capillaries appear like thick wires. So we call it as wire loop nephropathy, okay, membranous. Clinically, it will be nephrotic syndrome, but unlike the childhood type, here the protein urea is non-selective, means both albumin and globulin will be there because of the slightly increased damage and they may have hematuria and usually they do not respond to steroids. Morphology, wire loop, thick basement membrane, sub-epithelial humps of IgG and C3. 
with effacement or loss of food processes. That's why proteinuria. And there is some damage to the basement membrane. That's why globulins are also leaked out. So when we see electron microscopically, there is this black deposits of immune complexes under the epithelium and the loss of food processes there. So it is uh, in adults, 40% continue to become chronic renal failure, but good recovery is there in children, membranous. Now, although it is hump deposits, under microscopy, it looks like uniform because it gets integrated into the protein of the basement membrane and the basement membrane gradually becomes thick. And that appears as wire loop, membranous glomerulonephritis, very common in adults. In all autoimmune disorders, drugs, infections, HIV. Now coming to nephritic syndrome. In nephritic syndrome, there is oliguria, hematuria, azotemia, hypertension and minimum non-selective proteinuria. Again, three common conditions I am discussing here. Post-streptococcal proliferative glomerulonephritis, IgA nephropathy or Burgers disease and rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis. And I just put a picture of a SLE patient, that's all. But now remember, SLE can produce nephrotic syndrome, nephritic syndrome, and rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis. All can be possible. Now the most common in children is the acute post-streptococcal diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis. So it is one of the autoimmune diseases induced by streptococci. Think of rheumatic fever also another one, what we covered in term one. So it is also known as post-infectious glomerulonephritis in children. It is an autoimmune, again the same gas bacteria, but type 12, which is a nephritogenic species. But it can be caused by other bacterial infections and viruses, but rare. Commonest is streptococci. So the pathogenesis, one to four weeks after the infection, in C2 immune complexes are formed in the glomeruli, C3 and IgG coarse deposits, one to four weeks. And there is inflammation now. So it activates inflammation, neutrophils come in and the proliferation of the mesangial cells, it becomes inflamed glomeruli. And that inflamed glomeruli compresses the blood vessels, capillaries, so not much of urine is produced, so oliguria. And because the damage is big, there is whole blood leakage. So patients present with hematuria, these are the RBC cars and neutrophils. Non-selective proteinuria and decreased serum complement. So hypocomplementemia, decreased C3. Hypercellular glomeruli with neutrophils and collapsed capillaries. And that's why nephritic syndrome. Children post-infectious period present with fatigue, headache, hypertension, edema. So I'm just showing the picture of a normal glomerulus compared with a post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. Observe the difference. Capillary lumens are not seen here. Plenty of cells. Many of them are inflammatory cells. The second one is IgA nephropathy, Burgers disease. It's a common cause of recurrent hematuria. So just hematuria which is very common in young males, more common in Asia Pacific countries, usually following infections, but it is a congenital disease. It is due to abnormal IgA in the body, antibody formed against glycosylated IgA and this immune complexes get deposited in the mesangium. So it is common genetic IgA, familial, in case of celiac and liver disease, it's known as secondary IgA nephropathy because of lack of removal of IgA in the liver. IgA containing immune deposits within the normal glomerulus leading to thickened, bigger glomeruli with more protein in the mesangium. And by immunofluorescence, you will see IgA deposition. It produces episodic asymptomatic hematuria usually following infections. Microscopic hematuria in 40% and visible or massive hematuria in about 40%. Renal failure occurs in about 10%. Now I am showing an IgA nephropathy progression from starting from focal to diffuse to total destruction of the glomerulus. So that's how it progresses. 60% cases only partial and they improve. Whereas in about 40% they go into 
chronic renal failure. I'm just mentioning other causes of asymptomatic hematuria. Important is also think of diabetes. I have not written here. SLE, vasculitis, polyarthritis, henoxonline, purpura, bacterial endocarditis, infection, septicemia, exercise, hematuria. All these can be differential diagnosis for a hematuria asymptomatic. Okay, now rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis. This is not a separate condition. It's also known as crescentic glomerulonephritis. It is any of the glomerulonephritis can become RPGN when the inflammation becomes severe. So acute severe rapidly progressive renal failure. That's the definition. What happens is that so severe inflammation within the glomerulus, the inflammatory fluid and cells get excreted out from the glomerulus and it gets deposited within the glomerular Bowman's capsule and that leads to that crescent formation of inflammatory exudate. So these are known as crescents. And when we see this under the microscopy, that means it's a very bad prognosis for the patient. There are many subtypes but I don't expect you to remember and usually they progress to chronic glomerulonephritis and end stage kidney very fast so with a poor prognosis so showing a picture of RPGN only concentrate on the glomerulus here now what you're seeing is a crescent inflammatory cells compressing the glomerular capillaries so blood doesn't flow through and this glomerular becomes non-functional so epithelial crescent and a collapsed capillary that is RPGN. Nephritic syndrome, oliguria, hematuria, decreased GFR, edema due to salt and water retention and activation of renin with hypertension. Nephrotic syndrome is pure proteinuria, only protein, usually albumin, so massive albuminuria, hypoalbuminemia, and edema is because of decreased albumin that is osmotic pressure. Hyperlipidemia, we don't know the reason, but it happens. And lipiduria, lipid in the urine with the protein cast in the urine. Here it is RBC cast. Oliguria, hematuria, here polyuria, albuminuria. Now the progression of glomerulonephritis, most of the glomerulonephritis, they heal. Okay, So post-streptococcal, 99% heal, only 1% goes into chronic. Whereas 90% of crescentic are rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis becomes chronic. Minimal involvement of the glomerulus, moderate or severe involvement of the glomerulus and total involvement of the glomerulus leads to total end stage kidney disease here. Note the GFR measurement and different values in the four different stages of kidney failure. And also note that many of the other glomerulonephritis become crescentic and then it gets into chronic glomerulonephritis. Okay, thank you.